je t'aime. Oh, if you find it on thing, you could just put it on here. What is your name again? J-E-T-A-I-M-E, je t'aime. J-E-T-A-I-M-E. Yeah, we're two, two separate words. J-E, space, capital T-A-I-M-E. Okay. Which one you find? Antony, one by Antony something. Je t'aime, Fabian, Antony, full song. Yeah, 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 yeah
Pleasant good evening. This is Dr. Raj. This is Exclusion on Power 102 FM. I am here this evening with Aisha Wells, my new co-host. Hopefully, hopefully she have a lot of questions for me. I see she was busy writing on some things. I hope, I hope it's questions. <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? First time I'm meeting you. First time we're here or doing a program together. So let me give you a little synopsis of it. Well, Sexplosion is a program about sexual education. Um, of course, we reach out to the public. Any questions a person may have on anything related to sex, relationships, um, things that are happening to them personally. I have a clinic in St. Augustine that deals with all sexual dysfunction among males and females. Couples come to me also for consultation. I deal with everything and anything associated with sex. Um, the power of this program, and since we have been on Power 102, this is our 19th year being here on Power 102. Um, I started off with Chris way back when, then branched off to a few others. Ruben even did some programs with me and um, uh, some Tom and some others. Mm -hmm. And eventually Junior Saldana came on the program about two and a half years or three years later on. And he stayed with me until now. Wow. But in between you'll have other persons, oh, Mark yeah. Daddy and yes. Um, and apart from that, we used to do a program in the afternoon. I used to do that with Sir Charles called the Evening Sex Drive. It was called the sex drive that was done for a while. So um, it's all about sex education. I know the word sex sometimes makes people cringe or think differently, or sometimes they um, they're intimidated by the word. And although it's not a bad word, it's something that could cause persons to be embarrassed simply using the word sex. But we're here. The reason why I came up with the name sex explosion it is to blow the myth out of sex. It's 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 all about blowing the myth out of sex and um that's what sex explosion is about taking what people take to be um, rumors and false information and, and removing it from society encouraging persons to become more aware of themselves their sexuality their sexual behavior why people do certain things because you have a lot of things that be on the news about sexual behavior for example um rape um pedophilia, things like that that affect society. And sometimes a person may see it and say, well, he nasty and this shouldn't be done and whatnot. But as a sexologist, we look at what in society contribute to these things, what in your environment and your immediate environment and what is in your culture, your religion, your belief system, the area that you live in, the geography, even the country, we look at all those things. So we are sexual anth anthropologists. And it's important to note that Sexology as a term did not come about until the end of the 20th century. And the reason for that is even when I wanted to study sex, there was no terminology as sexology. As a matter of fact, when I started, it was, it was a term that was bandied about, but it was not a profession. <laughs> there were sex therapists, but no one who studied sexology as we say. So um, eventually it changed in, I think, in 1999 when the World Health Organization came up with certain terminology, for example, andropause. And sometimes you may hear the word andropause. And some persons mistakenly say, well, andropause is male menopause, but there's no such thing. It's just that when the um, World Health Organization was coming up with a word, they put andro, which deals with that part of the system, and pause, and bring it together, andropause, because of uh, the same thing like menopause. But andropause is when men have a drop in the libido, now, this is, this is something that you, you, might, you might find fascinating or you may not find fascinating, but I know the listeners would. Um, in Trinidad and Tobago, the average age for a person going through um, andropause is much lower than what is accepted worldwide. I'll answer that in a while. <laughs> for example, the average age of a person going through andropause worldwide is between 37 and 42. Why? Between 37 and 42, your body changes. You no longer producing certain elements or chemicals in your body as you used to when you were younger. For example, growth hormones are no longer being produced. DHEA and those things are no longer being produced. So by the time you hit the age of 40, and most men will tell you this, you start feeling different about yourself especially if you're paying attention to yourself. In Trinidad and Tobago, because of our lifestyle, because we like to burn the candles at both ends, 
and even in the middle at times around carnival time we both burn the candle both ends and the middle we like to party we like to lime we like to drink we like to we like to do all the wrong things we live in a petrochemical country guys who are working along the east west corridor you are breathing in carbon monoxide all the time those guys who are working in point lisa and of course petrochemical which is now closed down but working in the oil belt persons who are doing welding painting driving trucks diesel trucks and what not persons who are doing maxi taxi work and what not they suffer from early anthropos it's because of the type of jobs that they do another thing is stress what persons don't realize is that stress is something you don't know how it's going to manifest in your body and you don't know how it's going to affect you but what we do know as sexologists is stress is one of the number one contributing factors in the lessening of your testosterone which is the male male hormone that makes you a man so if that hormone drops what happens is the individual starts behaving differently sexually that's why a lot of families have problem because the wife will start accusing the man of having another woman because he's longer interest right correct correct and this is something we try to educate the women about also i'm not saying all men are going through andropause and that's why they no longer have an interest in the bedroom or in their wives but let me give you some of the symptoms of andropause so you'll understand lethargy you wake up in the morning you wake up but you don't want to get off the bed you're lethargic things that used to excite you before like sporting events and sports and being competitive no longer is of interest to you a woman who's to turn you on when you see her walking by is like you can look at her and you'll be normal it doesn't arouse you your libido drops the feelings that you have sexually also wanes and drops your erection in the morning is no longer there your morning erection is like a uh, signal when you start losing morning erection or if it starts lessening what they call a pee stand in front of but it's not there's no such thing as a pee stand because if there was such a thing every time you wanted to urinate you'll get a stand so what is called morning erection goes away gradually and then it just goes so those are the symptoms and signs of a man having andropause but of course If someone comes to me and although they have all the symptoms and signs of andropause I don't treat them right away because I have to look at the underlying factors I will ask them questions to see how society is affecting them their jobs no so then persons don't tell you the truth all the time especially when it comes to their personal being because they're afraid of they're afraid well if I tell this man my real job my view I come and I work for for a bligh or something they, for whatever reason but I send them to do a test, test their hormone levels, test their prostate. Then, when they come back, now in that period, I give them things to start cleaning up themselves and getting them ready for treatment because I already know what is happening based on experience. But I can't start treating you unless I have it in black and white that this is exactly what's wrong with you. Then I give you the course of treatment over the period of time what you have to do. Now I could advise. I could tell you what you need to do. I could suggest as much as I want to, but if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it, because human nature is like that. A person may start off; they'll feel good the first time they start off, and then they have high expectations. Like for example, today a guy here came, have problems for close to five five years, but because he's involved with somebody now, he wants a fix today to one have sex with her tonight. But what? happened five years ago to cause your problem and you did not treat it i can't fix that overnight because my magic wand broke and my crystal ball is shattered so i cannot do any semi demi to get you there now the person might go to the pharmacy and buy something and use that to get an erection and they may get it but it may cause you more harm than good because i'll tell you why if you have a underlying factor that is causing your problem here and you take something to circumvent the problem you have not addressed the underlying factors and the underlying factors will always be there so you may take something and it works here now but later on you will have to take a higher dosage for it to work or it may not work at all you may have to change whatever you're taking so that's the problem that comes around although there are lots of things that a person could go and buy 
and try out and see what works best for them. I don't ever suggest that because the things that you use could cause serious issues later on, right? It could make things worse. Now, it is in, it, for women, it's a little different. Low libido is also caused by hormonal imbalance, um, endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, things like that could cause it. Now, you have medical factors that could cause it in both male and female, like diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, those things could cause it. But with women, one of the factors that also cause it is a bad relationship that they have. You cannot expect that somebody abuse you now and want to make love to you later. Met mentally you'll be out of it another thing is if a woman conjure up in her mind that her husband is um infidelity in the relationship or he no longer is attracted to her and whatnot that drops her libido the way she thinks about herself self-esteem plays an important part in the libido both male and female but more so the female there are lots of women out there who are they're not they, they don't have that surety of themselves they don't feel good about themselves because of the way they, um, some men treat them or the things that are said to them and that's where the problem comes along mentally they're out of it they cannot get into whatever they're doing because their mind is not really into it so sexual dysfunction among women is not a quick fix with a pill no either is it a quick fix with an injection so a lot of counseling goes into that, building the person's self-esteem. There are women out there who have a need and a want. But because society has placed restrictions on women and what, how they should express themselves, they cannot even express themselves as far as their sexuality is concerned or what they will really need. For example, let me give you a, 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 I don't want to be too raw at this time because normally on a Friday night we'll do this. But let's say, for example, oral sex. Very few men will listen to their partner when it comes to that. Because they tell themselves, I am man, I'm macho, and I know what to do. So I will do whatever I want to do to you, and you better like it. As opposed to getting guidance from the woman as to where to do this, what part of the body to touch first, how to go about doing it, the rhythm that you're using, they're not willing to listen. So that also plays a part. So the woman sometimes just lies there and have things done to her without she being involved in it. And that's another problem that you have in society or you have in the bedroom with men and women. There are other factors that we have to look at. We have to look at also um, the racial and religious background that they come from, the area that they come from, how sex is frowned upon or looked upon in the area, what they were taught by. by for example, most young ladies are told that the first time you have sex is going to be painful. And if you go into the act with your husband after you're married and whatever, with the notion that it's going to be painful, believe me, it will be painful. As a matter of fact, some men will tell you the, the woman will be pushing them away when they're trying to enter. Because and when you do that, immediately the muscles clamp up. So it becomes painful because of what you're doing and because of your mindset, what you believe. So these are the myths we have in society that we try to blow out of. Now, when you think about arousal in a woman, if a woman likes someone, like a man or like a woman, they will become aroused upon seeing the person, hearing their voice, thinking about them. These are normal, everyday things. That is how you react to your lover. That is how you react to your partner. But if after you react like that, the fear factor comes in, everything dries up. And when I say everything dries up, Literally, the vagina becomes dry. Mentally, you become dry towards your partner. So there's no longer stimulation or excitement to be with the person. So the fear factor also comes in with abuse. For example, if your partner asks you to do something and you're unwilling to do it, it may end up in a quarrel, a fight, physical abuse, mental abuse, or verbal abuse. So because of your fear of these things, the next time the person comes to you, or if it is a repeated process where this person is always abusing you because you're not willing to do something sexually, eventually what's going to happen is that you're going to be shut off of the person and you're just going to have sex for having sex sake. 
because you are the wife and you think that is your duty, so that's why you do it. And there are lots of women out there who are in a position like that. They have sex with their husband, not because they are in love with their partner, or not because they want to share their body, but because they're fearful of the person. That's not a good reason to have sex. Another factor is that there are women outside also who have a need and a want to do certain things sexually. But if they bring it up in the bedroom, their partner will start questioning, where you learn that? Who tell you? Who teach you that? Why you want to do something so nasty? What's wrong with you? They'll use all these derogatory terms. Now, remember, we all have a sexual nature. And that sexual nature comes about because of our DNA, our parents, the things that we are exposed to, society, what we consider to be normal, abnormal, or a morality, or a religious belief. All those are factors that come into our sexual being. But if you see something of interest, if you read something in a novel, if you see something on television or a movie, or if something is trending and you pick it up on social media of a sexual act, it may pique your curiosity and you will start exploring that mentally by looking, reading, seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, whatever. But you will want to find out more about it. And you may ask the husband, you know, I saw so and so and I'm interested in doing that. Or in the sexual act when things are heightened, you will say a certain word that will, tell, will spank pinner and the person might stop whatever they're doing and say, what's wrong with you? I'm not going to do that. But that may be your desire at that moment because of the, your sexual urges and what has been awakening you. And lots of times that also causes a problem because the person does not, the person who is reacting negatively to you with that doesn't understand that these are the things that could happen. Now, your sexuality, and I'm not questioning your sexuality, but your sexuality, when you are a teenager, changes with experience. Every person changes. The things you liked as a teenager sexually may not be the things that you like in your 20s. May not be the things that you like in your 30s. And all, cumulatively, all the things that you like from 30 go back, you may not like in your 40s. Because remember, the body changes. The mind becomes more experienced. Your physical act, you have more experience with that. So that will determine what you want later on in life. Is there such a thing as sexual compatibility there are people who don't get along regularly but only in the bedroom correct what will cause something like that i guess you see um sexual compatibility has a lot to do with the chemistry between you and a person it also has to do now the person you marry to may not be your sexual compatible partner there's two persons getting together you really don't know what they like how far they will go unless they spend time sexually together and have a deeper understanding of each other. But two persons who are rom romantically involved with the aim of getting married later on does not place much importance on the sexual compatibility part because they love. The romance is high. Things are going well. This is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with until... No, the, 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 remember you're so excited by the person when you see them. And... The sexual act may be things that you're experimenting with and whatnot because both of you are comfortable doing that prior to marriage. But once a ring go on the finger, people change. Mm -hmm. Yes, it That's is. Very well. Fun. That is where things change because you know why? You feel the person now belongs to you, so this is my possession. He or she has to do what I want, how I want it, and there's no room for compromise. That's why compromise is one of the important factors when it comes to sexual compatibility. But let's say, for example, one partner is bisexual and the other is not. They will not reveal that prior to marriage. What? Shame, guilt? Shame, guilt, or afraid that if I reveal my bisexuality to my partner, he or she may not want to marry me. Remember, we put on a mask. We create a facade around ourselves when we want to get married. Yeah. It's true. We do that. You don't know a person really until you start living with them into in marriage or in a common law situation two or three years into it. You know. 
for the first couple of months, everything is all hunky dory and rosy and whatnot. You ain't seen the faults, you know. That's why when two persons are together and they interact with friends and whatnot, the friends will see the faults of the individual, but they dare not tell the person that you know your girlfriend is so and so or your boyfriend is so and so, you know, because that will be the end of the friendship. And that's where the problem. That's where the pro that's where the problem comes in, because. Bike on road. <laughs> so, um, when we study the individual who has the issue, when we study society and the couples or whatever, or we even take the information from the person to deal with the couple, we have to come up with a plan to work, to work with this person to make things happen. And the difficulty is, would be when the person don't tell you the whole truth or when they don't tell you everything. And believe me, 95% of the times they don't tell you everything until they become comfortable with you. Even their profession, they're afraid to tell you. So in other words, you literally buy cats in back all the time? Um, no, I wouldn't <laughs> say that because it all depends. I won't tell you until I have some sort of security. And I'm true, true. But again, all the time when we will have the relations with, you know, with like faking, not really enjoying. not faking, not revealing everything, holding back on certain things about yourself. That's why in certain societies, when you are, when you are matchmaking, the persons what they do is they look at the family and the family history to see if there's any mental illness or instability in the family, if the if the husband and wife remain together and all those kind of things, they look at that. To get an idea of how the person may be, but they cannot know the personal aspect of the individual. And a lot of time, what I'm finding out a lot now in our society is that there are lots of individuals who get married for all the wrong reasons. For all the wrong reasons. And marriages are falling apart. Because now, you don't look at family compatibility. You don't look at other things we say well i'm in love and love conquers everything love does not conquer everything infidelity or it will even call cause one person not to sleep with the other person in the same house or the same bedroom you see that happening a lot of couples who've been married for long periods of time. but not even long periods of time i am seeing that happening with couples who are married 10 years and that's not a long period of time. But what happens with couples who are married for a long period of time? Sex comes out of the equation because of some illness or some other factor. Infidelity is also something the mother will never tell the children, well, that's why I don't want to sleep with your father anymore. And they keep it a secret. That part of it, they keep it a secret. But they no longer sleep with one another. Or they no longer sleep in the same bed. So the sex factor comes out of it. Although sex is the semen that binds a relationship together. They use the family bond to bind the relationship together now, and the sex factor comes out of it. So that's one of the things that happen with the older folks and the persons who are longer into a relationship. But the younger folks or the persons who are in a new relationship, it's very disheartening to see those who don't spend time with one another in that intimate way. No, sometimes they'll say, well, we have a child, so the child will sleep with the mother, so I don't sleep with the mother, or the child will sleep with the father. Those are foolish mistakes. The child does not belong in the bedroom of the husband and wife. The child should, if you, if you, if you could afford it, should sleep in a crib away from the bed, right? If the child is in the same room, there should be some sort of curtain or barrier between your bed and the child crib or bed. If the child, if you could afford it and the child has a separate room, put the child in a separate room and put all your monitors and whatnot there. Cameras are cheap now. You could watch your child on your cell phone if you need to do that. You could put a monitor in the room and hear everything that's going on for every second. All these things that you can do. But a child does not belong in bed with the parents. A child is a dividing force. So we take a break when we come back. What to discuss. I like 
Do you visit the Well, you could bring up that when we start, like, program, so I'll, I'll expand on it. Center 638 or 6379 Do you visit the suburbs here? Yo, Kids Shopper! Shopper! Kids 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 Explosion is on Power 102, and now on new days and at new times. The country's most informative sex education program, Sexplosion, is on every Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. and Fridays from 9 p.m. to midnight with Dr. Raj Ramnanan. 
the guru of sex in the Caribbean. A lot of times we think that sex is totally below the waist. It is not below the waist. It starts in the brain, the largest sex organ that's in the is your brain. Tune in for discussion on all sexual matters. Sex on Power 102, empowering you. We are back, we are back. Mm-hmm, and we are back. So you had something there uh, from someone? Yes, a friend of mine just message from the United States of America, and mm-hmm. he is agreeing with what you're saying, that sex is in the mind. Um, he says in his house, it's a rule that they don't frequently walk around the house fully exposed to mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. For the mere fact that it will become normal if you see something all the time. Correct. You may not have a desire for it after a Correct. while. So in order to keep their relationship, what he considers to be fresh, they don't even do that. Yes, yeah, some people will choose to do that. They will choose not to be um, in the nude in front of each other um, because when that... that they, 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 yeah, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. You've got to know what will make your what will make you tick. Your brain has to your brain has to be wrapped around whatever you need to do with your partner. So if you see it's it's like this. You know, um when, when we were doing sexology, when we were studying in, at university, one of the questions that was asked, if you see a woman in a sexy dress and another woman totally naked, which one would you go for? And you know, most men said the one that is sexually dressed. Because you already see what's in the packaging and the packaging is no longer on the person so you're seeing everything so if your woman is exposed to you all the time mentally you no longer have a desire for her because you have already conquered that so when the woman is dressed in a way that entices you because i can hand you a present in a box a brown box and you will accept it because it is a present and you'll be excited to see what's inside but if I take the item out of the box and hand it to you in your hand, there's no excitement anymore. You said, okay, thanks. And, you know. But take wrapping paper and put it over the brown box that has the present inside of it, and it does something to the mind. Presentation. That's why we use wrapping paper, and that's why we use a bow, and that's why we use ribbon around the boxes. Those things, some person will say, well, I'm just spending extra money. But it's presentation. So how the woman presents herself to her man and how the, and it works vice versa also in. Because remember when you are courting, you are courting someone that turns you on. You are going around with a woman that is your ideal when it comes to a bed partner, that it comes to a, a life partner. So let's say, for example, the person you are courting is 135 pounds, dresses in a particular way, conducts herself and himself in a particular way that attracts you. And after you're married, the person moves from 135 to 175, no longer dressed the way she used to dress, and don't conduct herself the same way. What's going to happen to you mentally? That's exactly the same point being debated on social media with two actresses, Mm -hmm. one who is fit to the core, and the other one who has let herself go. And on the scene of a movie, the one who is fit, kissed the other one's husband in real life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the internet is now saying, well, you're no longer attractive or appealing to him, you let yourself go. And of course, women are having their say mm-hmm. on the AC because they feel regardless as to how I look, once I'm married, your mind. No, that's not true. And that's, that's actually the that cannot be true because I, I don't belong to you, you don't belong to me, first and foremost. Secondly, if the person I'm married to, or I got married to, no longer is attracted, attractive to me, mentally, physically, emotionally, and sexually, what do you want me to do? If you're not taking care of yourself to remain, well, close to what I like, or as time goes by, as I said before, from age whatever to 30, you have a, 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 a mentality and an outlook on life. But as time changes, you don't expect the person to remain exactly how you wanted them because you are changing and the person is going to change. So love changes also. So you are going to accommodate whatever is happening. Well, but if, if it's a big change... Changes, but then people are saying, well, you're married for love. And not no, love. people... 
you cannot be married for love alone because love does not conquer all and how do you want why do you want me to love you when you're no longer attracted to me, attractive to me how could i continue that love what are you bringing to the table for me to be in love with you of course not find favorable especially among the women i'm just i i don't care i just give the truth I give the truth, and I give it based on scientific evidence and studies and whatnot, and also common sense. Common sense trumps everything in this, you know. The woman will say that yes, because oh, it's all well and good for I to put a, thing, a ring on your finger and say you belong to me, and from now on I will never look at you know. When you go to a wedding, especially an East Indian wedding in the Maru or the Manda, they tell the guy from now on all other women should look should be a sister, your mother. Or or, or 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 something like that, right? And the same thing they tell it to the, the young girl. You think that is reality? That is just a guideline as to what you should do. You know? But it is not cast in stone because if your partner change in such a way, okay, for example, let's forget the physical appearance. Let's say, for example, the person you are married to, you're married for love person does not treat you good don't take care of your needs financially mentally emotionally sexually are you still going to remain in the relationship and said i'm married for love no. all right it so what's the difference of course it is the same thing one is a physical change that you can see the other one is an emotional mental change that has taken place internally that you can't see so the person will say well look at them you know there's a saying Show me a beautiful, sexy woman, I'll show you a man who fed up a fool. Yeah. Well, that's a fact. Because she may have been in a relationship with somebody who can't stand her best bone. Yeah. And the next man sees her and says, Oh my God, that's the one of my dream. Yeah. 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 So you, although you, love is an important factor in being married and being in a relationship, you have, to maintain, you have to nurture love as you go along. You know, Nurture it as you go along. Love is something that grows. It it, it could also diminish as you go along. How you treat your partner, what you say to her, what you say to him, how, the things that you do. There are some persons who will never tell you, I love you. But the things that they do are so loving towards you that you don't have to question whether they love you or not. It shows in what they're doing. And there are some persons who tell you, I love you, you know, God, darling, you're the best thing since life spread. Oh, God, I love you too bad. And they treat you badly. They don't come home. They don't even want to come home. There are guys who prefer to stop by the rum shop or the bar. Well, let's use a better word, the pub. <laughs> Same rum shop. Than to go home, you know. And they'll say, abandon with my partners. But every night you're abandoned, so? Because they don't want to face what they have to face at home. Let's say, for example, the person is nagging. And I'm, and I'm not saying female. Male or female. There are some men out there who nags like hell. All right. So, that is something you want to face. That is something you want to, you, you're going to be comfortable. So what you're going to say now, when you go to the pastor, the priest, or the imam, or the pundit, what are you going to say? Well, we married for love, so we're going to remain. The love is not growing. So I don't know what you're talking about, the trending, I haven't seen it yet. But It's the actress Nicole Murphy. If you Google it, you would see it. Mm -hmm. But Nicole is good for her age, by the way. Mm -hmm. I think she's in her 50s. But if she's over 50, but the husband, her husband is... It's not her husband. It's another actress's husband. Her name escapes me. But she used to look like a doll back in the day. And now she's out of acting. Mm -hmm. so she she don't take care of herself. Yeah, she looks like a completely different person. Uh -huh. But her husband still acts. And he was doing a scene with Nicole Murphy. If you are he in... Hit. If you and are in... A little bit more passionate than people expected. If you are in the field of acting making movies and whatnot, you have to be blind to those things. You really have to be blind to it because there are scenes where a person will do something and you can't tell me. And this, this goes across the board. A man working with a woman, there'll be chemistry, there's a relationship. I'm not talking about a sexual relationship, but there's a relationship. Once you are coming into contact with the opposite sex, even with the same sex, there's always chemistry. How come a guy who has never met another person Goes to work in this business place and all of a sudden two of them is best buddy. They're liming on weekend, they're going and fish, they going and hunt, they're going and do this, they play cricket and water, they become best buddy. You think that's a relationship. So you cannot 
expect that two persons in the, the realm of acting, making movies, would not have a passionate kiss or have chemistry between them. It happens. I think it is why it's more of an emotional problem. And she probably feels about herself that she's more into it. That is what she's doing and taking it out on the husband. If she made it an issue. Maybe society made it an issue and not her. That's another thing. Sometimes society, right, right, exactly. Pressure of society could go. For example, I have been on this program for 19 years. You know, many time people question me about my wife and whatnot, and ask me question, "Oh, your wife just put up with you? Your wife know what you just be doing?" They ask you those questions because they want to drive a wedge. Not everyone, but some of, some of them genuinely ask you the question. You, I will give you an example. There time, there was a time I was sitting next to my wife. Somebody calls her and tell her, I am heading to so-and-so place with a woman in my car. She said, hold on, let me ask him. He's sitting right here. Because that's what she will do. Yeah. She don't let those things get in the way. She don't let them think bother her. But not every woman is like that. Sometimes society put pressure on you, and you have to deal with it. Because I could be here sitting here doing a program with you, and somebody could be whispering in my wife's ears if she allowed them to bad things about you and I. And vice versa, where there is no such thing happening, but because people in society always want to, see, you know, women like to see men who are married, and they like to go after them who are married, because they want to, they want to know the fact that I could be better than your wife. It's a challenge. It's a mental challenge. It's a physical challenge. These are the things that happen in society. These are the the things that happen around us, and we have to know how to deal with it. I'm not saying all relationships are like that. You know, I'm giving examples of things that happen in society. And we cannot be so blind. We cannot be the ostrich that bury our heads in the sand and say, this is not happening because I am so-and-so or because I know so-and-so. These are the things that are happening in society. The richest man in the world, the most powerful man in the world, the most powerful man in the world cannot tell me that he will step out a line or his partner would step out a line because he's the most powerful man in the world. Because you may be the most powerful person in the world, but you have no time for your wife, you know. And she may have her needs. Money don't buy love. Money could, and I'll give you examples, and I had this very same conversation yesterday with two of my best friends. We are noticing a trend in society. There are a lot of young, rich boys and things moving about in society that are in relationship or getting married to young girls and whatnot. I know half the time it's working out. Because they think money could... They have the most elaborate weddings. Most elaborate... They go to the best places for honeymoon. And the wedding will last in three months. It will last in six months. Because you know why? They get married for all the wrong reasons. They never know their partner. They never know the sexual preferences of the person. There are men who are married and they're gay. And vice versa with women. Because they never took the time to find out about the sexuality of the individual, the behavior of the individual, or what will, what the, what will pique the person's interest. They don't do it. And this is a phenomenon that is taking place in our society right now. There are lots of young couples. Right? I heard of one couple right now, recently, where the husband, he only preferred to go and fish and hunt and no time for his wife. Young couple. And when you hear that, when you hear that, you're wondering, no, he feels he's secure because he done marry. And not only that, she's home and the parents living right next door. So she can't do nothing. But you go get one on your own bed and you know. And that's the reality of society and that's the reality of life. That is what takes place. That's why when I have to do lectures and all these things, I try to instill in persons the values that you must cultivate with your partner to make your relationship work. To make it work. I had a friend recently, I didn't see him for about 25, 30 years. And he started asking about, you know, how you, you have children. He said, I said, yes. He said, um, the lady I saw with her is second wife or because she looks younger. She looks young. I said, no, that's my wife. He said, no, nah, I know the same woman he was married to 30-something years ago. I said, yeah. <coughs> but he couldn't believe it. He said, and you still be doing all them things you're doing, boy? You're still in the sex world? I said, yeah. I said, but I have my wife's support. 
I made sure when I was getting involved in this, I asked her because she knows me better than I could even know myself. So if I don't have her support, how could I be do- successful in what I'm doing? But people do question those things. And it's a legitimate question to ask. Because I use myself as an example so that others will not say I have to use others as an example. I, I cannot talk to individuals about keeping your marriage together if I was a divorcee. That's being a hypocrite. I can't give advice on that if I, if I can't keep my own marriage together, if I can't keep my own family tightly knit, if I can't make my children happy, if I can't make my wife happy, I can't be coming here and talking about that. I'll be a hypocrite. So I have to use myself as an example at all times. I am the example. That is what makes you successful. People think it's money and, and, and riches and, and material things, but that is not what makes you successful. What makes you successful is your ability to manage the things that you have to manage to make your life comfortable in the best possible way and to make those around you as comfortable and as happy as possible. That's what uh, my definition of happiness because if you read Steve Jobs before he died, the things that he wrote about money and rich riches, one of the richest men in the world, if not the richest man in the world at that time, but he couldn't pay anybody to lie down in his bed and take his pain, suffering from cancer, and he wrote all that. No matter how much money you have in the world, and it, it did not give you the comfort. You could pack up all the money around you on the bed. That doesn't give you comfort. What gives you comfort? Why when somebody in the hospital, they don't bring their BMW and their meds and pack it up outside the thing and watch you watching your Benz and see if you'll be happy? We all fight to have a BMW or Benz or a, a, a Range Rover or something. But when you're sick in bed, bring the Range Rover and pack it up there and watch it eh? and see if you'll feel good. Isn't it the woman who comes and sits next to you or the man who comes and sits next to you and hold your hand and say, darling, I love you. Don't worry, you'll get over this. Isn't that what you want, the comfort of the person? There are persons who are dying in bed right now and their children wouldn't go and see them. So are you successful? You might be the richest man in Trinidad and Tobago. And you're in, a, you're in your deathbed and your children don't want to come and see you. They're waiting for you to dead. I wonder what I'm getting. And that's the reality of life. But when your daughter or your son come and sit by your bed and you see tears coming down their, their face because of compassion that they have for you, because of the love that they have for you, then you are successful. Then you have done something right. Then you have created a world where people, or not even their wife and children, which is expected of them, but friends and family and well-wishers. I guess from pretty early, our priorities are mixed up. Our priorities have become in... Our prior- priorities have become engulfed with material things. And we stop being the persons that we are supposed to be. Even with our partners. We are so chasing after the almighty dollar. Now, riches is a way of life. But you know, I I was reading recently that if you take all the money in the world and divide it equally among every citizen of the world, the 7 point something billion people that we have, you know, eventually all the money will end up with those who had the most uh, anyway. Because they're going to find a way to get it from you you will end up spending it and it goes back to them so when India launched the chariot to Narayan rocket to, 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 to the moon and they tell India well why you don't see about the poor people in your country instead of sending a rocket to the moon you know what they tell them it costs less to make up it costs less to send them to the moon than to make a Bollywood movie that's what they tell them a Bollywood movie does cost more to make than to send a rocket to the moon because you know why other countries do not want to see you become a first world country by sending a rocket to the moon or doing things that first world country does. You shouldn't be doing that. Leave that for us. But poverty is a way of life. No matter what country, you feel America do have poverty? I took some friends. I will tell you a story. I had some friends went with me to LA. We went to a place called the Fashion District because most Trinidadians will go there. And they go to Santi. And I took them all this area. I say, remind me later, later to take you all somewhere. They say, why? I say, you just remind me. I have to take you all somewhere. That night, 8 o'clock that evening, I took them back to Santi again. And they were appalled. Every side street 
everywhere on the pavement. There were tents popped up all over with poor homeless people sleeping. I said, that's the right way you pass this morning walking. I say, I feel America don't have poverty. This is poverty. And I'm talking about street after street after street. I said, didn't we go to that Burger King today? Watch outside. I said, in the morning, they were all going to pack up the tent, put it on their back and move out of here. But in the night time, they allow them to come and sleep on the side on the pavement. That is poverty. But those countries will tell other countries, eradicate poverty. Yeah, yeah, yeah before, they, they, they may have no poverty line. Because they don't even count them in their census. They have not nothing to do with them. They're not part of society. Right? But they will want to tell us third world countries what to do and how to manage our, our poverty. But they have it as much as worse in some places. Yeah, because some seasons change in some states. Correct. And these people are on the streets. Have you ever been in Italy when it's cold? It's really cold. And when it's hot, it's stifling hot. They have extremes, you know. Right now, last week I was in, in, in Vegas. It was 113 degrees. Right? And last week, at a time of freezing cold. And you find the very same thing there. But the point being is that we like to judge others. And we hold our heads, or we hold ourselves to a higher standard, not realizing that there are others just like us. So it's the same thing with your relationship. You're watching your neighbor, you're watching your friend, and saying, "Boy, them look like they have a real good relationship. Watch how them will sing and laugh and dance with one another. When them go out, boy, you can't separate them. But who knows? In the bedroom, they might not be even sleeping with one another. Yeah. You see most times. That's why the only person I can use as an example is myself. Because I cannot tell you how another person lives. So what advice would you give to a couple? Any way it doesn't matter. Like how when I'm when happiness, healthy when I'm uh, when I'm asked to give a speech at weddings and whatnot, I one of the questions I will ask the couple is is this the happiest day of your life? And they will all tell you yes. But it's not. It's the beginning of the happiest time in your life. Use this to measure the rest of your days. Do the things that you would normally do when you're courting. And try to remember what you're doing when you're courting. Show the person what you adore them. Show the person what you want to be with them. Let that love or let that spark go on. Find ways to show it, express it, say it. Excite the five senses of the woman, the five senses of the man also. We like to not only see, we like to taste and touch, smell, hear. We want to hear nice words. Those are the things that human beings crave. Those are the things that we want. And always remember that. I'm not saying that you're not going to have an argument. I'm not saying you're not going to get vexed with your pap. I'm not saying you're not going to quarrel. Those things happen also. But it's what happens after that. That's what's important. After the quarrel. After the, 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 the ill will that you may have towards each other. But be careful of what you say. Because what? Like, this, like the bullet that leaves the gun. Once you say something with the mouth. You can't take it back. Eh? You can apologize for what you want. That's why when women insult men about their penis size, after that, sex could never be the same. Yeah. It could never be the same. How could it be the same? Because now in the back of his mind, he... I can't satisfy you. Yeah, of course. And women, weapon are their mouth and tongue. I want to say good afternoon to my significant other, soon to be my husband, that's not going to listen from Britain. Mm -hmm. He said, I hope you're taking him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's for you. Oh, excuse me. I, I thought you were reading something for, on behalf of someone. Yeah, on, on, on behalf of someone else. No, but those things are factual. When I come here, I lay, let, me, let me tell you why this program has survived 19 years. I tell persons, if something that I've said on the air is false, misleading, or otherwise, bring it to me, and I no longer on the air. I'm here 19 years now. I don't come here and talk about things for talking sake. You know, I give the facts. 
And even if you bring something that contradicts something, that I, I will bring you the facts based on what I have studied, what I have done, or what I have seen. Because the, and it's like this. Sometimes I'm introduced to persons. I know the first thing that jump out of someone's mouth. Oh, he can't teach me not mine. I know everything about sex. I just do so. I bow to you. Because I learned in sex since I was in my teenage years and I don't know everything about sex. I've been studying this since I was 11 years and four months of age. I made it my life and I still do not know everything about sex. I wish I could, but it's impossible because there's so many different areas of it. There's so many manifestations of it in the individual. There's so many um, different things. Now, there's nothing new in sex. Eh? Absolutely nothing Everything new. Everything has been tried before. Of course. At some, point. At some point in time, since the beginning of time. Everything. The only thing that is new in sex is this. Social media, phones, and technology. Technology has changed. But sex has not changed. Behavior has not changed. But you see persons, okay, so like I look at a lot of documentaries and there are people who, one man in particular, he lives with dolls, life like yeah, dolls. Yeah, he those are, that's a fetish. That's a fetish. And he refused to form natural relationships with women. That's a fetish. There are men who live with their cars. Because he lives with dolls. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fetish. I'm not saying it's normal, but it's a fetish and he may need help and he don't know it, but that's what he likes. There are some persons who don't in Trinidad. We bring a lot of sex dolls for, for individuals because they don't want to form a relationship with a physical person because of STDs, STIs, fear of the way the person will treat them and other things. So they are uncomfortable or they were, they were abused by their, a, 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 a former partner or, or one of the things that happens a lot now, this is a changing very rapidly in our country, and I'll give you an, I'll tell you what it is. Men approaching women and they cut in style on the man. Now with the influx of Venezuelans. You go and cut style. How did they even do they, everybody <laughs> batting in the crease. They're changing that behavior. It's rapidly changing. And I saw it. I have a clinic in Princess Town and Davy. And I saw it in the Southland. Most persons in the Southland are taking up with that. Because you know why? It's easy to get that. And the women there are feeling left behind. So if you don't adjust your attitude to what is happening, and this is society. Remember I told you we study society. If you don't adjust your attitude based on what is happening in society, things pass you like a full bus and you men right there. And that is a major issue also. So I have to say a pleasant good evening to a few persons here. My nephew Sachin is on. Cassie is on, Lynette, Rihanna, Tanya, Howard, well, Howard is in Aruba, Sonia, Savitri. Ah, we have a nice viewing audience here on Facebook. Chandra, David, Vindel. Well, he used to be a long listener of this program. He's in Canada now, I think. Nasa, Sandy, Mina, thank you all for being with us on Facebook, for those of you who want to send me a message, my number is 740-1961. For those of you who want to call in the program, 222-8255 um, and 612-8255. You can call in now, 222-8255 and 612-8255. The lines are open. You can call in, ask your question. Someone is calling already. Who? Please call back. Please call back. For those of you who want to send your message to me on WhatsApp or my cell phone, it's 740-1961. Someone says, very good point, Dr. Raj. Um, please send me your name if I don't have your name before. <clears throat> so, but in the years of studying society and behavior and individuals and things that are happening sexually, Good evening. Good evening, Aisha. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. Doctor, tell me something. See if you could unfold this. Sure. A couple more. Everything going good. Right. If he is not home for five minutes, 
she will probably make a call and say, love, where are you? Um, I hope you're getting to I miss you. Mm-hmm. But lo and behold, after two, three years, he is so mad with her because she did something. He killed her. Mm-hmm. How that came about? Well, love is Can one thing. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Love is one thing. Possession is another thing. You know. Possession is not love. You know. What is the difference between the two? Most times, young couples can't tell. In this generation, in particular. Because you think that the, the person belongs to you physically, mentally, and, and emotionally. It's not a form of slavery. If you think I possess you, that's a form of slavery. Unless you have a relationship of a sex slave kind of thing, master slave kind of thing with sex, that's something different. But if I am married to you, that I does not mean to say, it does not mean to say I possess you. The love that we have for each other should also be based on trust. So if my love is based on trust, I trust you, you trust me, I don't have to question if you have done something wrong. We all make mistakes in life. And if you don't have a forgiving heart or you cannot work around your differences because we will slip up. And that's another thing. If you think you have married, you are married to the perfect person. Something is wrong with you. That person may be perfect to you at the moment, but that person is also human. He or she will make mistakes. But your love must be so strong. The adoration that you have for each other must be so strong that despite the fact that a person may have made a mistake, you must be able to reconcile. You must be able to put those things aside and say, hey, what? Let's move on. I want to live with you. I realize it's a mistake. I hope it doesn't happen again. And it could happen again. It could, because given the circumstances for it to happen in the first place, it could present itself, present itself again later on. Because a lot of times, we contribute to those things, you know, meaning the other partner contributes to it, you know, but we are not aware of our contribution to it. Infidelity, for example, it is not always the fault of the man or the fault of the woman. It could be both parties contributing to it. But we like to think that we are all innocent in whatever is happening, and he have no right to do that, or she have no right to do that, because she should love me so much that she should never want to be with another man. But physical attraction and love also is two different things. And with men... The thing about it, um, Doctor, some of these men, as soon as they have committed the act of murder, their feelings are totally detached. Yeah. They go about in merry way as though they didn't just dump a body in a bush over so... As as a murder that we saw happened recently. Yeah, because in our society, we are becoming immune to that. We are numb to it. We think Life has no value. That is a, is a terrible thing that is happening, you know. We get so accustomed to reading on the newspaper of death. I remember in our days, when someone is murdered, you buying papers, papers sell not for a month, you know, because <laughs> the, 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 the people falling up, they arrest him, the case going on, this, you know, this kind, of, this kind of thing, because that is unheard of. In society today, when you have, listen to me, you know what was a, I don't know how society hasn't risen up here. And I'm not talking about risen up in a way that you want to overthrow a government or anything, you know. I mean, risen up and said, here what? Enough is enough. You have 24 people being killed in the space of a week. In a war zone, you don't get that. Indian Pakistan at war, and you don't have 24 people being killed in a week. Think about it. You have eight people being dumped at sea and tell them swim to shore. They're all dead. Well, one, one swam and got away. Seven of them dead and you have everybody moving about normal. What kind of society we have? What kind of society do we have when those things are the norm? So it's the same thing with our relationship. The per- and you know how you justify it? Well, she won me now, so I had to kill she. Or she have an next man so what did you do for she to have an next man did you take care of her and cherish her and do all the things to make sure she stayed with you or did you allow her to stray 
Because when you were getting married to her or chatting up with her or whatever, you were doing everything possible. It's like it's like when you put the bait on the hook and you catch the fish. Right? Now, most people say you catch the fish, they eat it. Some people say you catch and release and whatever. But with a human being, you're putting all the bait down. The first thing you say is have plenty of fish out there in the sea. Well, if you have plenty of fish out there in the sea, leave the woman alone and move on. Leave the woman alone and move on. Forget the violence, forget the murder, and forget those things. But we forget that after we bait the hook and we get whatever we want to get, male or female, we forget we have to keep on nourishing that, you know. The nourishment will come. The flowers or the chocolate or the banana or the orange or the apple doesn't come as a gift, you know. They're waiting for somebody else to do it, you know. No man should be giving your woman a flower, you know. And not, no, it has no excuse that it's Valentine and the whole office giving a flower, you know. Watch that. When women bring flowers for me, for Valentine, yeah, I say, give it to my wife. As a matter of fact, my wife will be right there, say, here, look at one time, one time. no one time because why should you allow someone else to nourish that as a person why should you allow someone else to put their foot in the door why should you allow that i think pride most times ignorance ignorance of the time the they not being willing to be a man. They don't man up. They think that if they do these things, they, they, they're looked upon as being soft. I should not have to do that because she knows I love she. So I have to do that. I have to give her a little gift. I have to do anything like that. There are men out there who are married. They get their paycheck. They go and sit down in a rum shop. They want to... They want to outshine their partner so they put, buy more rungs than their friend and go home empty-handed. And every rum shop now have a roulette machine. So while they're drinking the while they're drinking the plane. And I wonder how are you going to face your wife and children with no money in your pocket at the end of your payday. When I see that, I'm disgusted by it. You see it in all the bars and whatnot. As a matter of fact, I saw it in a bar once and I see these fellas fighting with the machine, hoping they win back whatever they have lost. So that they could go home with something. Where's the love? Where's the caring when you do these things? I think the first thing you should do is go home, hand the wife your paycheck, and keep a little twenty dollars in your pocket or whatever you need to go and have a good time. That is what you should do. Take care of the home and your children. Buy books for your children. Buy if school books. You have to buy school books at the end of the, the, the holidays. All now you should be buying part, 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 because you wouldn't, you would not have all the money to buy it in a lump sum. There are places that you could go and put away a parcel of your books and want to come and pay every week. Give the wife that responsibility. But persons are not willing to do those things because they always feel they're going to make more later on to cover those expenses. But that is the love I'm talking about. Those are the things that you need to do. Those are the little things that you need to do. Beverly is on. Black Sidis is on. Whoever that is. So the little things that we need to do in life to enhance our relationship, relationship, to strengthen our relationship, we don't do it. We push it aside and we tell ourselves it is not important. And it is important to note those things, to continue doing it. And do not open the door for somebody else. There are guys falling short all the time because of alcohol. I am not saying don't have a good time. Yet, but have a good time with a budget. And know the extent to which you could do it. I see people doing things that I cannot afford to. And they are on a salary. And I'm a professional. Because when I see how they are doing it, and what they're doing to themselves and their family and their loved one, their girlfriend, their common law partner, their whoever it may be. I wonder how they survive. And I question, what kind of love can you have for your partner when you do those things? When you find more time to do things that are going to take away from you, take money away from your family, you know, 
one of the things in, in, in the treatment of individuals, a man will come, he has to get supplements and whatnot. When you add up the cost of the supplement, let's say you come up to $900. Using that as a figure. You know what he'll tell you? So much. We, uh, I think I will hold off on that. You know. That same man will go and sit down in a rum shop to impress his friends, buy a bottle, buy chasers, buy food, spend $500 on, in one evening, drink out a bottle of whatever it is with his friends. He might be even call for a bottle of champagne to show off. But that costs more than his tablet that will last him for a month. And that only lasts him for a while. Um, it's up to you. <laughs> right, so we're going to go for that break and we'll be right back. Thank you. You're listening to Power 102. I am happy, I am healthy, I am healthy. I am happy, I am healthy, I am healthy. Would you like to discover the secrets to better health and happiness? If so, listen to Dr. Ernest Hazelwood every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. on Power 102 FM, courtesy of Vibrant Health Detoxification Center, 638-5679 or 638-1680. How Trinidad, your wrong way is over. Get 20 points, Hannibal India Expo, behind KFC, next to Fonstation La Romaine, from July 20th to August 12th. Once a year only, full Indian food court. Check us out for home decor, furniture from over six countries, curtains and sheets, garments, footwear, jewelry, toys, the ceramic ware, and everyday household items and much, much more. We're open daily, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., including weekends. Incredible India Expo, behind KFC, next to Fun Station La Romaine, from July 20th to August 12th. Jamboree Kids. <laughs> the heroes and champions are coming. Kids Jamboree 2019 features the superheroes and champions of TNT. We call it Jamboree! Slip down the adrenaline rush slide. Pose for your picture with the Kids Jamboree Supers. Jump in the bouncy castle. Climb the rock wall. Walk through Ian's exotic petting zoo. Check out the face painting booth, cartoon characters, and step into Jurassic Park world. Attractions, rides, food, performances, and a full day of fun awaits. Have a blast with us this vacation. Yo, Kids Jamboree! The Kids Summer Jamboree. Kids Jamboree. Kids Jamboree. Doors open at 1 p.m. Sunday, 4th August, at the ML Ballpark, Center of Excellence, McCoy. Superheroes and champions. The fun and vibes is coming. Sponsored by Sunshine Cereal, Sherry Dairy, The Milky Milk, Blue Waters, Tampico. Go discover the flavors of fun. Fats International, Cons Bike Zone, and the Any One Mobile app. It's Emancipation! Five days of non-stop cultural expressions at the Lich Yasumu Ali Emancipation Village, Queens Park, Savannah, Port of Spain. The largest African market in the Caribbean, July 28th to August 1st, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Bring family and friends to the Pan-African Festival TT. Commemorating Emancipation, African and traditional Caribbean food, authentic African clothing, and new designs in jewelry, clothing, craft, leather shoes, bags, the best of Trinidad and Tobago craft, storytelling, games, and educational activities for the children. Come and enjoy Pan. So, spoken word, drumming, dance, jazz, singing, you don't want to miss it. $20 entrance fee at the door. After 3 p.m., children under 12 free. On Emancipation Day, August 1st, free admission for all. Akawaba. All are welcome to the greatest celebration of Africa, outside of Africa. I love this suit love, inviting you to join me every Tuesday and Thursday, 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. for the program Slow Gospel Music, a program designed to soothe your mind and uplift your spirit here on Power 102.1 FM, FM, Power 102.1 FM. Anybody big there? 
It's Emancipation! Five days of non-stop cultural expressions at the Lich Yasu Umuali Emancipation Village, Queens Park, Savannah, Port of Spain. The largest African market in the Caribbean. July 28th to August 1st, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Bring family and friends to the Pan-African Festival TT. Commemorating emancipation, African and traditional Caribbean food, authentic African clothing, and new designs in jewelry, clothing, craft, leather shoes, bags, the best of Trinidad and Tobago craft, storytelling, games, and educational activities for the children. Come and enjoy Pan, Kaiso, spoken word, drumming, dance, jazz, singing. You don't want to miss it. $20 entrance fee at the door. After 3 p.m., children under 12 free. On Emancipation Day, August 1st, free admission for all. Akawaba. All are welcome to the greatest celebration of Africa, outside of Africa. How Trinidad, your long wait is over. Get ready for incredible India Expo behind KFC next to Front Station La Romaine from July 20th to August 12th. Once a year only, full Indian food court. Check us out for home decor, furniture from over six countries, curtains and shades, garments, footwear, jewelry, toys, Islamic wear, and everyday household items, and much, much more. We're open daily, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., including weekends. Incredible India Expo behind KFC. Next to Fun Station, La Romaine, from July 20th to August 12th. Trinidad and Tobago, we're ready, standing united and moving forward as one. Let's do this. Tobago, are you ready? We're one people, one nation, and all in this together. We are all in this together. Let's do this with Shema Wilson on Power 102, empowering you. Power 102 presents Campaign 1441. You will decide. Comprehensive coverage of local government and general elections in Trinidad and Tobago. We have completed our local government nomination process. Campaign 1441. With news, opinions, interviews, expert analysis, and live coverage of political meetings. If we are to go forward as Trinidad and Tobago and have that unity and diversity, we must be able to give a voice to each and every one. Campaign 1441. Covering candidates contesting the 14 corporations and local government and 41 constituencies in the general elections. Campaign 1441. On air, online, and live with our Campaign 1441 team. Andy Johnson, Tony Fraser, Paul Richards, Avril St. Hilbert, Gregory McBurney, Sparkle McIntosh, Melissa Stanislaus, Dennis James, and Stanley Augustus. Campaign 1441 with the biggest names in politics, business, academia, and more. Bringing you the news, views, insights, and analysis. Campaign 1441 on Power 102, your election headquarters, empowering you. The event of the summer is here. Yo, Kiss Jamboree! Kiss Jamboree 2019, featuring your favorite superheroes and champions. This is the super-powered kids concert of the summer. <laughs> Introducing Baila Naila. Everybody loves soccer music in here, make some noise! And her full band. <laughs> Dance with me at the kids' jamboree. Super second. My superpower is to make you rock out. Second star! I will never switch up on my friends who drive by. Five star a kill. I want to live like this. Yo, we going jamboree. Five star kill. I am coming to break the vibe. Break the vibe. I turn it up. Kids' jamboree. I'm going to live like the incredible Island Boy, Creedy. Get summer. Let's go. One day two could share the place. One day two. One day get some fun. One day two. Share the place. Incredible Island Boy will be dead. Joyous Sharon. Make me talk to them guns, man. My superpower is to bring love, laughter, joy, peace. Okay. Kids Chevrolet 2019, Sunday, 4th August, at the UML Ballpark Center of Excellence, McCoy. Superheroes and champions. The fun and vibes is coming. Sponsored by Sunshine Cereal, Dairy Dairy, The Milky Milk, Blue Waters, Tampico. Go discover the flavors of fun. Fats International, Cons Bike Zone, and the Any One Mobile app. We the people. Starting this and every Sunday, all new on Power 102. We the people with host Aisha Wells. Join Aisha from 2 p.m. this Sunday as she engages you, our listening audience, as she discusses people, politics, purpose, and progress. Be a part of the discussion via the Power 102 app with your messages and calls. We the people, only on Power 102. 
empowering you. Sexplosion is on Power 102. And now on new days and at new times. The country's most informative sex education program, Sexplosion, is on every Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. And Fridays from 9 p.m. to midnight with Dr. Raj Ramnanan, the guru of sex in the Caribbean. A lot of times we think that sex is totally below the waist. It is not below the waist. It starts in the brain. The largest sex organ that you possess is your brain. Tune in for discussion on all sexual matters. Sexplosion on Power 102. Empowering you. We are back. We are back. Mm -hmm. Dr. Raj. A question here. Very interesting question. What should I do if I come home from work and catch my husband with my sister? Wow. Wow. How that person reached Sexual question. Interesting. interesting question. There's about five different answers to that. First answer is that you react as any person would react and go ballistic. Second answer would be you stop, you examine the situation, take a deep breath and try to figure out what's your next move. Thirdly, you could let the persons know that you're there and you're seeing what's happening and move away or join in. So you have a number of things that you can do. It all depends on your personality. It all depends on your um, the way you look at things and the relationship that you have with your husband and your, your sister. One of the things with joining in is that if your sister get up and leave, all you have to do is tell your husband, you see, I will in, but she not. <laughs> so who's the better person here? <laughs> so it can work to your advantage. <laughs> so... There are a number of, number of ways to um, react to something like that. There's no correct way. Legally, you have all rights to do certain things in vi with violence. You could say um, temporary insanity. That's a good defense. So there are a number of things you could do. It could be opportunity to do the old bobbits, if you so choose to do. So... It all depends on the person and what they're willing to do. I cannot tell you how to react. I cannot tell you how to feel. You will know your feelings and you will know your reaction. I see my mother is here with us. Sit around to you, Dal. Um, Bobby Kemi over in Florida. Celia, Sue, Lisa. Interesting, you said your mother is online. I know you told me you started studying from a teen. How did mommy take my to parents? Get have, study? I they um how to put it? My parents. <laughs> I come from a. Uh, I will say my parents were very open minded. Okay. They are very open minded. They okay. never restricted their children in any area. Um, of course, when I was going to study, I didn't tell them I wanted to study sexology. <laughs> my first degree is in accounting. Um, but my mother always knew the kind of person I was. I never hit any. She was my she was my best friend growing up. And she would tell me, as a matter of fact, when I decided to go public with what I'm doing, she said, Don't feel I don't know. I know. But they always supported me. So as you can see, they, they still do. Till now. They, sometimes my well, my father hardly I wonder mean, if he, he watching news. Well, news does he want to bed. <laughs> so but we have a very good relationship, and um, they have really good, very good relationship with their four ch surviving children. Um, it's just the way we are. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And they are very dedicated to their religion and to everything else. So some people are, you grew up in a Hindu home, your grandfather built temple, your father... So you come from a religious background. Very religious. And I haven't left that. I haven't left that. My spirituality is my spirituality. Awesome. I have never so, deviated I mean, from that's that. That's even interesting. So it, it's okay to have a spirituality attached to your personality. Of course. Your personality must not be dictated by your spirit. Oh, did I make sense when I say that? No, your personality should not be changed because of your spirituality. Yeah. Your personality is your personality. But I, and I, I, I said this last week and I'm going to say to you, I was asked to address the bishops of the Caribbean at a symposium. And when I stood up to talk, to my right was the bishop from St. Vincent. And he turned to me and he said, Dr. Raj, I want to ask you one question before you address us. 
um, could you could you tell me if do you believe sex is spiritual and my immediate answer was yes i said okay you can go ahead now mm. because sex is very spiritual the only two things that create is sex and sex and god so it has to be godly yeah. sex is godly so there is a spirituality to it prove that program us in such a way that you know it's not it's not even talked about it's considered taboo well that's what i told you at the beginning of the program when we mentioned the word sex immediately we cringe we cringe to the word sex and not realizing we are all sexual beings and we come from sex but because i am a sanatanist we come from sanatan dharma and our teaching also has a root in sex the kama sutra the anangaranga tantra all those things come from sex okay. so there's a heavy teaching in it there's just that it's not taught because we live in a western society in the eastern society and what not it's part and way of life the depictions on the temples and thing in india also depict sexual poses and different things but it is it is not because of the lust or or or, or the physical act alone but it is also based on the spirituality one of the main things that we do in the religion has to do with the two reproductive organs of the human being the penis and the vagina because that is the symbol of creation <laughs> and lots of time we don't even realize what we're doing but for those who are elevated spiritually and who have studied the philosophy of religion not not the rituals of religion the ritual of religion is this best way because if let's say for example i come to you and you are on, on your altar has a lamp right whatever religion you belong to but you have a lamp on your altar and i go to someone else Home, who has the same religion and they don't have a lamp on the altar I'll say you know for you to pray you must have a lamp on the altar that because that becomes part of the ritual but it's not the spirituality Understood. and this happens we dilute our religion with rituals so once it's not done in a once it's not done in a particular way wrong. you're wrong <laughs> but i have never in any religion heard that you cannot speak to god on a one you don't need to go to a temple temple or church or mosque to talk to god you don't have to invite anyone else to speak with god you can do that in a spiritual way and you could you could create that link and strengthen that link as you go along based on your belief that's why when we use religion to divide we are doing a disservice to to the same god that we believe in the very same thing that we believe in because in every religious belief take out the word god right we believe that there's a higher form than us isn't that so yes it's true but the only difference is that we put a name to that higher form but we all believe there's a higher form to us that we should revel that we should respect so that's why when i pass in down on our commercial street and i see a man peeing against a church wall it infuriates me as much as i see if i see someone doing that at a temple or a mosque the very same way because it should not be done it's disrespect at the highest order it doesn't matter if it's been done to the christian faith the hindu faith the muslim faith the jewish faith because that's my belief and that's the kind of so that's the kind of home that we were brought up in not to discriminate against any religion or race but to embrace all and i think that gave me a strength that wasn't ordinary in the people that i came into contact with because people could not understand my best friends were from <laughs> so diverse a background that one day i was at some friends home well their apartment was downstairs my apartment i consider them my friend because i would talk to them they would be nice to me but they had the um a flag on their window that nobody want to be there mm-hmm. i didn't give a crap I, they were my friend they were my neighbor so i was there i was home by them because they invited me to a party one of my friends came looking for me knowing the kind of person that i am this is somebody from africa now so you know what he is right came to the door and knocked he is from nigeria he was my best friend the guy who opened the door looked at him slammed the door in his face and came to me and say your end friend is outside and i stopped him one time i say you are also my friend I don't see color or race so stop it 
And then he realized that I had all kinds of things. <laughs> but it is because of where I grew up. I grew up in a wonderful place called San Gugandu, Funapo. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I grew up in that area. I went to school there. My high school was there, Northeastern College. I live and breed and intermingle with people of all race, culture, creed, and class. So I don't think people should be using that as something to be divisive. I think we should take that and make it our strength. So it's the same thing. That's why when you have interracial marriages, intercultural marriages, or persons from different country marrying one another, there's always a problem. And the first problem comes about when my religion is better than your religion. Or I want to dominate you based on my religion. There are some religion that you have to convert to their religion to get married. To get married. That is wrong. Yeah. Until you come to the extent that you can't be unequally yoked and they use religion yes they use well right exactly whereas have you ever seen the life of pi the movie at the beginning of the life of pi that movie when the guy went to do the interview he realized the guy who is given the interview pi well it wasn't pi at the time he was he, eventually he was pi um told him he said you could be a jew hindu a christian hindu or a muslim hindu Hinduism embraces all, which is a fact. You cannot convert. You could believe. You could do all the rituals and whatever, but you can't convert. You still remain in your belief system. So it's because it's embracing. It's a myth to, be, to believe the saying that you have to be born into Hinduism. It's, that's a myth. That's a myth. Right? As a sanatinist, we'll tell you that it is all embracing and all inclusive, full stop. So, but that's the religious part, but that plays a part and that rips apart the, the relationship. When you want to have religion, when you want to have belief system dictating what happens with you and your partner. And that's where the problem comes in. Good night to you both. Just relaxing, enjoying your program, reach up safe. Anna from Rio Claro, thank you very much, my dear. I haven't seen you for a long time. Good night, Dr. Raj. Well said. I'm glad you spoke about this. I stop people as well when they start. <clears throat> That's from Sweet Reds. Um, what did I miss? I saw I missed something here. Yeah. If it takes much more than love to have a successful relationship, it oh such as respect, understanding, and communication. Why is there so much emphasis on love? The emphasis on love has to do... You see, love... Can one define love? Somebody will ask the question, can you love more than one person at the same time? And the answer to that is yes. Because anytime you try to put love in a container, you can't contain love. That's true. Um, it, it was hard at first for me to understand but then i guess i i like different things as an individual and i like them for different reasons so then i have to assume love is the same way yes <laughs> love love is universal love you can't take love and put it in this container and say this is what love is if you do that with love on yourself you're limiting yourself Right? That's why the emphasis is placed on love. Love is supposed to be all embracing, all encompassing. It is something that flows from you. It's something that grows. It's something that makes you feel better about yourself, other persons. So why limit it? And it encompasses all the other things that we think about. All right. What questions we have? Hey, my good friend Carl is on. Viva, how are you? Kerry is on. Where are the questions, my friends? Come on. Mm. Okay, so yeah. I have one here. Go ahead. Someone is asking, at what age should you have that sex conversation with your children? I hope you, um, I hope nobody will look to, uh, Ambush me when I go outside in the car park, but at three. At three? 
start the conversation with three. You start telling the children the real name of your body parts. You stop the bird and bees crap. You let them know, that, know about emotion and love and relationship. But you cannot give an example of a relationship if you're not in one. And that's where the breakdown in family life comes about. When one is getting married, we all want a remote control and a manual on the person, you know. We yeah. like to have a manual, but we don't ever get that. You know, is the manual? The manual for your relationship is the successful relationship of your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles. That's your manual because you're looking at them, especially if you live in an extended family environment. But you have no reboot control to tell the person, shut up or lower the volume or raise the volume or anything or switch them off. You have nothing like that. Those things are developed as you're going along. But when you want to inculcate good values in your children, you tell them the truth from the beginning and you use the words that are proper. A penis is a penis. A penis is not a piggly. You stop using the foolish words to describe the body parts because a penis is an acceptable word. A vagina is an acceptable word. Sexual intercourse is an acceptable word. Children don't want details. Because we as adults feel that it's sex education. If we're going to educate our children about sex, we have to show them our blues. That is not because they think that is what it is. Because that is what appeals to us. I what is remember it? in secondary school when we had that conversation in our um, science biology class, they showed you a book of STDs mm -hmm. in order to explain sex, and that haunted me for years. That's the worst thing that you can do. And I think it, it's not just... All it's a school. deterrent. It's, do, it's it all, all do you know why? They want to frighten you into not having sex. Mm -hmm. But the love conquers all. So if you're in love with somebody, conquers that, you know, that, that image is erased from your mind until you have sex with the person. And afterwards, you're like feeling guilty. Oh, God, I wonder if I get something. But, oh, God, I wonder if we're going to end up like that. <laughs> but it is to frighten you. It is not to educate you. Education is not frightening people. That's why some teachers, because of their egos, when they go to teach, they give you the hardest formula first. And they solve it because they want to show you that I bright. But that is not teaching. We have another question from Canada. She says, ask, what is the youngest age a man does have problems with his libido? Ah, you could have problems with your libido from 18 onwards. Okay. Because we live in a society now where there is fast food that has a lot of chemicals that causes men not to develop properly sexually. You know, there are men out there with no penis. Young men out there with no penis. Well, they, they have it, but they do not use it? No, no penis. Oh, right. okay. The scrotum is like two little marbles okay. because under development of the penis and scrotum. Okay. It's a serious problem that we're facing in society that nobody's addressing. I bring it up here from time to time, but nobody's addressing it. She says, uh, for example, soft sense, center soft, erectile dysfunction, no feeling for sex, etc. That is, that is part of andropause. Some center soft is when you're unable to get a turgid erection. But there's nothing that I... No. Sometimes, if the person is so advanced with what they're doing, and they have so much experience sexually, it takes a lot from the other person to turn them on it fully. So you have to look at that factor also. What are the experiences of the individual and what it will take to turn you on to the point where you're able to do things properly? Um, I'm being asked a thought by someone here. She says, um, is anyone born gay? Yeah, of course. They are. Of course. Not everyone. Eh? You, homosexuality could be could be one of two things, right? Yeah. Biological, meaning you're born that way, right? Or introduced. Homosexuality could be introduced also. Conditioned. I had a conversation with my daughter at the age of 60 as to when she thinks she would lose her virginity. She asked me what type of question is that. She's 20 years old now, and we have a very open relationship between a mother and daughter. She's still a virgin. Okay. 
But I think when that person had asked the question, what kind of question is that? I would have told my daughter it is a legitimate question for a parent to have with their child. But I was not going to ask the question. You would start the conversation. I will start the conversation. And I will start the conversation with the utmost respect, but in the fullest way that you could respond to me. That's why my two children, I have two children, only two children. I don't believe in having children outside and all them kind of crap that people yeah. have. That is not me. Right? Um, <clears throat> That I once I had to apologize to my daughter's boyfriend. I said, You wouldn't handle her. I said, Because I grew up to be very open minded and very independent. And I apologize for that because that's how she is. We have very open conversations. I mean, not in detail where it becomes embarrassing to either party, but so much so that you could ask me anything and I will give you the truthful, correct answer. And once you can give a truthful, correct answer, you go in a positive direction. When you beat around the bush, because sometimes a child is asking you a question that they already have an answer for yeah. the question and they want to see how you're going to handle it and if you're going to tell them the truth. Okay, I'm being asked again from a man. He wants to know if, you know, it's abnormal that his wife does not want him to be and take care of his daughter. Is that an abnormal behavior? He, but I, he, I would, he I would, he sees nothing wrong. How old is the daughter? The daughter and, is, and she's five. I don't see anything wrong with that, but it depends on. He says uh, no, no for his wife. Well, maybe if there's a fear factor, then I would start questioning the wife on on her past. Mm. There must be something there that is bringing that because if the trust is there. If the trust is there. Now, if it is a regular occurrence that you want to do it every night, and think, I, I will also question that. Because if he, let's say for example, he's been home from work to be this, something wrong. But I don't see anything wrong with a father doing that to his, with his child because you're taking care of your child. Right? You know, there's a saying once a man, twice a child. There will come a time in a child's life when the ma mother or father may be bedridden and you have to take care of them also, you know. Right? Once there's no sexual touching and you have you have made that distinction with your child and your child understands that, right? There is nothing wrong with what you're doing. But if the wife is questioning that, or if the wife is saying that is a no no, I will question what has happened to her past. I would. Because there are lots of persons walking around with baggages and we don't know it because they never reveal it. So the fear factor must be coming in there with oh, this has happened to me with my uncle, somebody in the family was on a sibling. So she puts this mental right. up. Right, correct. Okay. Don't think they want social media teaching children what sex really. Social media cannot teach you about sex. Google doesn't teach you about sex. Sex education should come from the parent, providing that the parent knows what they're talking about. Yeah. And we have a lot of parents out there who are ignorant of the truthfulness about my sex. My parents would dare not have you talk with us. We had to find out on our on own. own. Yeah. That topic of sex should, it has, as soon as they can understand. Well, three years is the age they tell you where children have that understanding of their body parts. So you could start telling them. But again, when you're telling a child something about sex, give them a little bit of information and they'll take it and you'll see they run and play and thing. The next time they'll ask you a question and they run and play and do different things. Because they don't want they don't want to be bombarded with information also. It's, you don't, you're not running a school. It's not a classroom. They want bits and pieces of information, but they want truthful information. You know, I ask some parents sometimes when they place this high emphasis on virginity, when did you lose your virginity? I ask them that, point blank. Is it questions that they have difficulty answering? Most of them do. Because they'll tell you, it's do as I say, not as I have done. Yeah. And that's the hypocrisy in society. Many a times we have done things in our lives and we tell ourselves, well, hear what? I don't want you doing that. Right? When the person asks the question, have you ever done it? Like, for example, smoking marijuana, right? 
if your child, if you find out your child is smoking marijuana and they ask you if you have ever done it and you tell them no, but they know you have done it, isn't that being a hypocrite? Yes, they know you're lying. But if you tell them, hey, what, I tried it, I didn't like it, you could try it if you want. Right? You may like it or you may not like it, but you have to make the decision. That's how you treat a child as an adult. But don't go talking about virginity and whatnot. And you were doing that before. So many a times you have to be careful of how you answer. And because like I say, sometimes the child has the answer before you answer. That's right. Hey, Junior, you're here. Wait, I go in and knock you out tomorrow. Uh, I go asking for her to do the program. Uh, you you could stay here. home. You, you can ask for more than you what I Well, and you know something? I didn't mention it to you. I wanted to surprise you. So when well, you I, I was fully surprised. Yeah. A beauty, you can't ask for more than this. Well, I, no, I could ask for more. From a good I could ask for more. I want, don't want to hear tomorrow. <laughs> Aisha has to do the program with me tomorrow. <laughs> full stop. <laughs> Junior, I just lost your work. When management, when management contact me tomorrow, I'll tell them, hear what? I don't want Junior. Yeah. Aisha has to do a double and triple. Yes. She's doing a double tonight. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> I can sit down and watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You come in the studio and And that is only because we have years of history. Eh? Yeah. The history goes back. Yeah. Other than that, but I tell you, nah, 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 you can't, you can't watch, you can't watch. It was nice coming down in style listening. I like your interaction, I must say that. I like your interaction. It's it's very uplifting. I had all I'm shocked by my interaction for a first time. Yeah. Well, the first time he heard me on the radio, he ran out that door. Literally ran out the door. He heard the word penis and he was on it. And your brother take off. Listen, now the parents really did a number on us, eh? That's a fact. We, um, a lot of things that were told to us was based on myth and the whole idea of frightening you into thinking that this is a horrible thing. It is really horrible. And when you go back to what we were talking about with the spirituality and you realize that sex and God is the only two things that create. And we have this horrible concept of sex when you start bringing the spirituality into it, people tell you, no, you have to put a line there. There must be a line. You can't talk about sex and God in the same sentence. I went to do um, something sometime at a temple. And this pundit, a senior pundit, saw me and he came. And I, in our tradition, we bowed to the person's feet. Yeah. And I was about to bow to his feet. And he said, no, 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 hug me. And I hugged him. And he said, are you Dr. Raj? I said, yes. He said, I want to thank you. I said, for what? He said, you know, um, well, he started to explain what they do. And I said, yes, I understand that. I know all about that and whatnot. And he said, you wouldn't believe how much people believe that anything below the navel is evil and bad and nasty. And everything above is godly. He said, but the whole body is godly. He said, I like what you do. But I know that. You can't tell me the blood that comes from my heart that goes down to my penis is unclean when it gets to my penis. How is that? Because that same blood goes to my big toe. And it is what have me walking. So when you start differentiating parts of the body as being clean and unclean and what that, you are doing a disservice to yourself, your creation, and to that higher being that you call God. Well, as we pull the curtains down on the show, how do you want to end? Mm -hmm. um, like I normally will end it, I will tell persons if they have any interesting um, anecdotes or questions and whatnot that they want to ask tomorrow is the evening for, we get a little more on you, uh, on, a, on, a, on a Friday night, oh, we start okay. at nine. We start at nine. The first hour, the hour and a half, we kind of give a little more information. And after ten thirty, well, anything could happen. Junior has brought around here naked. Since they put up the camera there, he don't do it anymore. But sometimes he does that. He strips and runs around naked. You tell him about the secrets of one night. And then we have the angels with us, and they are also highly involved in the program. They will talk about things that um, that affects them personally okay. um their, their experiences and whatnot okay so well, it's, I'll it's a different program it's a different program but it's the same information but throughout the program whether it's a thursday or friday when persons have questions of a sexual nature no matter what it may be ask the question awesome. good night <laughs>